This podcast episode was produced for the glory of God and is brought to you in part by the Revive Our Hearts monthly partner team. The life of faith goes beyond just appreciating the journey. Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth explains. Even the process for us isn't the ultimate. It's not about me. No. It's about God's glory. It's about God's kingdom being advanced. And we are little itsy bitsy pieces in that much bigger, grander, redemptive plan of God's. This is the Revive Our Hearts podcast with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth, co-author of You Can Trust God to Write Your Story. For July 29th, 2022, I'm Dana Gresh. The righteous shall live by faith. It's a verse from the Old Testament book of Habakkuk. Nancy gave a lot of insight into this verse during her in-depth study called Habakkuk, Moving from Fear to Faith. Some friends have been listening along, and they'll reflect on what living by faith looks like in their world. Along with Nancy, we'll hear from the late Kathy Helvey, from Maria Johnson, and Kimberly Wagner. To get us going, here's Holly Elif. I love, too, as we've studied Habakkuk, watching him go from the point of wrestling with that whole issue with God about what was going on in his life and things he couldn't fix— And by the end of the book, he's at a point of rest. Even though his circumstances have not changed, he has realized that his responsibility is obedience to God, is listening to God, is waiting on God. And even though God hasn't changed his circumstance, he is at rest with where he is. And I love that because so many times my circumstances are not things I can change. But I can make a choice about getting to God in the midst of those circumstances. And He gets me to the point of rest. Mm -hmm. Same circumstances, but He was at rest. And and that is a precious place to be. And, And one that we could be a lot more often if we were quicker to obey. Getting back to that deer... He makes my feet like the feet of a deer, and he enables me to go on the heights. What I was thinking, along with everything else that was said, was that he lifts me above it. Mm. Because so often I'm right down here, we're in it, Mm -hmm. and we're of it. And it, it pulls us down, and we have got these feelings and these anxieties, and they multiply within us somehow. And it's God, not us that does it. Mm-hmm. He gives us his perspective. Right. Yes. Right. And it all and the situation stays the same, but we're looking at it differently if we're mm-hmm. looking at it at all. Well, you right. get thirty thousand feet above the earth and all those mm-hmm. things that look so major to us down here right. they're they pale into insignificance. And I mm-hmm. want to get to that point where I see Jesus mm-hmm. in it. Mm-hmm. I don't see it anymore. I'm not looking for what God's going to do. I'm just looking for his face in it mm-hmm. to see him more clearly. Right, And, and uh, God's perspective ultimately is eternity, yes. and not just the here and now, what's in our face. Mm-hmm. But I think that's the perspective Habakkuk got, was one of eternity. The things that are seen are temporal. Uh-huh. The things that are not seen, except by faith, that's right. those are the things that are eternal. Because this life is like a blink. It is. Mm-hmm. Well, and, that, and mentioning that, I'm so thankful that you ended with Horatio Spafford's uh, testimony. Oh when he was in that painful place, which I can only imagine, that struggle and pain and that loss, he probably only lived, though, maybe 20, 30 more years at the most after that point of his painful place. Mm-hmm. And for the last 200 so years, he's been rejoicing in heaven with his family. Yeah, right. That little bitty bit of time, though, in comparison. That seems yes, so that long seemed when you're living it. So long when you're in it. But also, now for 200 so years, his time of suffering and struggle has been such a testimony, a life lesson to encourage so many people mm-hmm. to, to say, yes, if he can write, it is well with my soul, with the loss he had in his life, mm-hmm. and turn to Christ mm-hmm. in the midst of that suffering, and that's what he embraces. If he can do that, 
I can do that. It gives us hope. Mm -hmm. Gives us hope, encouragement. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and we can know the truth of that in eternity, but we still have to live from now until then. And, And I think our hope is in the fact that God will be faithful even in this moment, even in this day, this Black Thursday, whatever it is, that God is present in that moment until the day when I see it from his perspective and it makes more sense because it may not make sense now. Wasn't it, you quoted John Piper once, Nancy, saying for every one thing that happens to us in our life, a hundred other things are happening at that same time in terms of God's mm-hmm. economy. God's providence. Mm-hmm. And we God's can see maybe one or two or three things he's doing, but he's saying God is always doing. There are a thousand right. different things mm-hmm. that God is doing that we can't see and we don't know. Mm-hmm. And to always remember, somebody once said everything because of God's providence and his wonderful sovereign love, <clears throat> everything that happens to us is Father filtered. Mm-hmm. And that always comforts me in the end when I start thinking straight amidst the crisis, once I'm on the other end of it, knowing everything that happens to me is from His hand, even the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's all Father filtered out of His love, Mm -hmm. and therefore I can drink the cup. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are writing a song for eternity, you know, we may have to live with this 20 or 30 or 40 years, but you think of uh, Horatio Spafford and Kim, the way you said that gives me fresh perspective that the way I'm responding to my life circumstances today not only is preparing me for eternity, but there may be 200 years from now that people are watching you and listening. A testimony to... left behind. Right. Mm-hmm. Find us faithful, as you know right. what the song says. Testimony of God's faithfulness. And was it John Wesley who said, Our job in life is to give the world a right opinion of God. Mm -hmm. So every time I'm responding, when I'm whining, I'm giving the world an opinion of God. But when I am rising above with deer's feet into the high places, not escaping, but letting God walk me through that with faith, I'm writing a testimony on the heart of even the next generation. And it brings God's glory. So you're fulfilling your purpose for your life, and that pleases Him, Mm -hmm. and that's the greatest place of joy, too, Mm -hmm. when we're bringing Him glory. Mm -hmm. I remember for me, it was a real turning point, going from acceptance to acceptance with Stephanie and her autism in our life, but our pastor had a sermon on on eternity in heaven, and he's the one that said, this life is a blink, and he clapped, Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of made you jump, and he said, in light of eternity, it's a blink. Mm. And all I could think of as tears streamed down my face in that church service was Stephanie's life that is so hard to watch. I thought, you know, it's a blink, Kathy, and you can blink because for eternity you are going to see her as she was meant to be, mm. perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Mm. And But then I thought, but Lord, this is so hard because this is like, well, like what we've been saying. This is all we know. But I needed to be reminded that forever I'm going to see her face mm-hmm. as it was meant to be with Mm -hmm. God forever. And so I thought, I can do this. With God, I can do this. Not alone, Mm -hmm. but with Him. Right. And we'll blink and it'll be over. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, like what we've been saying, God will be glorified. Mm -hmm. I would would not have missed Mm -hmm. what He wanted to do Mm -hmm. in and through me Mm -hmm. and her. And you know, that's so valuable, not only to have God's Word to walk us through to faith, But also, I mean, even just sitting here and listening to Maria today and Kathy and Kim and Nancy, it builds my faith when I hear truth coming out of the lives of other women who have been in that tight place. Mm -hmm. Just being honest enough about where we are that we don't also lose the advantage of other women lifting our arms. Women that will tell us truth. Mm -hmm. That's why Holly Holly is... um, a good friend to me because I can call her when I'm in the midst of a pity party and say, tell me truth. And and she is faithful to do that, but, you know, she's also sympathetic. <laughs> she's a good friend. But talking about eternity, it helped give me a new perspective on eternity. We were in a time of struggle and suffering in our church. Anyway, we had the opportunity. I was on a ship. 
out in the middle of the ocean. I'd never been where I could not see land at all. There was ocean everywhere, and I'd never been in that situation before. And as I'm looking over the ship and looking deep into the water and off as far as I can see is water, uh, the Lord just taught me that uh, as an illustration of eternity. Look at this water. Look at the immense amount of water as far as you can see. And that is eternity before you. And if you were to take one tiny pebble and drop it in, that's your lifetime. That's what you're enduring right now. Mm-hmm. That's the amount of lifetime you have. But look at eternity. Mm-hmm. And, and it's just a little speck when you, when you look at I mean, it's going to pass soon. It's going to pass soon. But he also showed me that because this life is so short and because eternity will not have any conflict, will not have any struggle mm-hmm. or battles, that while I'm in this little short unit of time called my life, this is the only opportunity that I have really to worship Him in the midst of battle, Mm -hmm. in the midst of struggle. Mm -hmm. So, I want to take the opportunity of every moment in this little bitty short life to give it back to Him in worship and in praise and glorify Him because I want to have the opportunity to worship Him in that same way, Mm -hmm. to worship Him in the midst of battle once I enter eternity. Right. That's so good, Kim. Didn't you say something in reference to there was a scripture where God left the battle to yes, come and comfort? comfort. Uh, Daniel, Daniel. Yes, right. it was Daniel. 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 That Daniel really 10. impressed me. Yeah, that, Daniel that, 10. That God is doing, Jesus was doing battle against the prince of Persia. Yes. But he came to Daniel's side to mm-hmm. strengthen him mm-hmm. and said, so now I'm going on back to the battle. But that the Savior would have that kind of heart for his mm-hmm. weak servant mm-hmm. um, is an incredible p- picture of the heart of God. Yeah. And I love that scripture that says, um, the righteous cry out and he hears them. How gracious he will be when they cry for help. As soon as they cry out, he will hear them and answer them. And that's what I was overlaying when you were talking about Daniel. I thought he's got important things to do here, Kathy. <laughs> but he is going to leave, <laughs> leave them and come to your pity party. Mm-hmm. And show his face mm-hmm. and lift you up, lift you mm-hmm. out of it, give you hind's feet, you know, mm-hmm. if I will be waiting mm-hmm. and listening mm-hmm. and willing. I want to go to that watchtower. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm thinking I, I go from the first part of the Habakkuk, I see it in three parts. You know, that first part where he's down, then he goes to the watchtower, okay, I'll wait, <laughs> we'll see, <laughs> and then... He's going to trust. He's going to have that life of faith. Mm -hmm. And I think I go from being down to wanting God to switch me way over here to faith like that. We don't want to go through the process of what it takes to get there. And be Mm -hmm. still and know that He is God. And however long it takes, Lord, you do whatever you want to do. And um, I'm walking out of this room just way behind (laughs) in that that whole principle, wanting, wanting God to... Take that and make it real to me. Maybe someday we'll get to the point where the process is precious to us, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm. even more than the outcome Mm. of being on the high place. I don't know if we'll ever get to the point where we long for even the process because we know the outcome. Well, and because the process brings us to his heart and what a better place to be, and the process is to conform us to Christ's image so that we'll glorify Him. And I I remember one night laying in bed with all of my struggle in front of me and realizing, all right, if the Lord wants to conform me more to Christ's image in this, what greater privilege is there? than to be conformed to Christ's image, that He's willing to do that. And if it takes this for me to be conformed to Christ's image, well, that's what I desire. Mm -hmm. Well, and also keeping in mind, if we step back from even what we're saying here, that even the process for us isn't the ultimate. It's not about me. No. It's about God's glory. Right. It's about God's kingdom being advanced. And we are little itsy-bitsy pieces in that much bigger, grander redemptive plan of God's. And so, 
you know, even if I had nothing to gain through this right. process, even if I were going to derive no benefit from it, no great outcome, but I knew that that's what would please God for my life to be dispensable, to be a testimony, to be used, to somehow bring Him glory. And there were no heaven to be gained, no eternity to enjoy. Mm. Would I still say, I embrace the process. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to just be an object lesson, you know, or uh, of your grace, uh, even if I didn't get anything out of it. And that's where when you come to the place, and I think Habakkuk did, where what mattered supremely to him was the glory of God. God's honor. Lord, revive Mm -hmm. your work. Yes. Mm -hmm. Show yourself. Make it known. Yes. And that's a free place to be. I mean, we never totally get there. But the the closer we can come to that way of thinking, the more free we are from ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's coming to the point of realizing, as I said earlier, that everything, the hard times, the good times, the waiting times, the process is God's provision for His glory. Because just like Habakkuk's situation had not changed, Mm -hmm. but he learned his heart had changed. And that was God's provision for His glory. We always think God's provision for His glory is the solo or the mission trip. or It's life. He said, live. Righteous shall live. Live. Live, not endure. Mm -hmm. Live. Live by faith. Mm -hmm. And that includes the good times and the bad times and the hard times and the crying out to God times and the alone times and... But he, even in that, God has made provision for his glory because where you started out saying God didn't come, God wasn't there. Yes, he was. He was there. Whether you felt it, saw it, understood it, he showed you later, yes, he was there. Mm-hmm. He, you know, I just— And I knew he was there, but mm-hmm. I was demanding— You wanted to feel that he was there. Mm-hmm. I wanted moment. to feel it. Mm-hmm. I wanted him— Tangible. To comfort me, mm-hmm. I, I wanted him to change my daughter, mm-hmm. to change the situation, to give me a glimmer of hope. And mm-hmm. I remember feeling the shame of, I feel hopeless, I feel abandoned, and, and admitting it to God, knowing he was out there listening, or right with me, he was out there in the trees that day, <laughs> he was so far away, you know, and, and, but just knowing that I knew him well enough and loved him and he loved me, that I could say all of this to him, I could be real to mm-hmm. him. And that's why this little book is all the more precious to me after these last two days, because Habakkuk was real. He shows mm-hmm. us that you're going you're gonna to go there, you're going to be there, and... And this is how God wants you to remember Him when you're there. Mm -hmm. And rejoice. This whole thing that you ended on, will you please Mm -hmm. do another session (laughs) on joy, (laughs) Joy. the joy of the Lord. Right. And providence, I want you to do Mm -hmm. a session on providence. But it's almost like uh, the Lord was saying, that may be how you feel, Mm -hmm. but that isn't true. I am here. Mm-hmm. And I am faithful. Mm-hmm. And just for the end of the story, in case you're wondering, it was, was such a horrific time with her. And I thought, oh, what are we going to do? Put her in a home, which I said I would never do. But after all we'd been through and almost hospitalizing her and now this, she wasn't going to cooperate. And what, you know, what were social services going to say? And on and on. And how I was feeling about her. Well, that night... <laughs> much to my sh- I, I told my family, you can get dinner on your own. I'm locking myself in the bedroom. I am that destitute. And um, Bob, I think, fed or something, my husband. <laughs> I woke up the next morning, and she was supposed to go to her next thing. She came down the stairs. I, I didn't know what to expect. I was expecting to call mm-hmm. the caregiver saying, don't bother coming. <laughs> she came down. What's for breakfast, Mom? Oh, got breakfast ready. She got dressed. Am I going golfing this morning? Yes, you are. Then lunch, yes, you are. Then library, yes, you are, Stephanie. Okay. Out the door, she went with a brand new caregiver (laughs) that she hadn't been with before. And a lot of this, when I look back, was too many changes for her Mm -hmm. all at once. She was just, because autistic people Mm -hmm. don't like any change, let alone Mm -hmm. lots of it at one time. But from that point, that next morning, she was fine. She was, and she's been fine ever since. Mm. And Judy's one of my caregivers. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Three days a week, and God provided wonderful Judy. But there has not been another situation. Now, there might be. But Bob and I have both, uh, this is helping me understand a little bit why I had to go through that. Because mm-hmm. my husband and I have talked, he, well, I don't know why you had to go through that. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know either. 
other than that, that psalm is more real to me now. Mm -hmm. And my life verse for this year, mm -hmm. I'm firm in it. I'm mm -hmm. going to do it no matter what. But Habakkuk has made me understand, you know. Part of the process. What mm -hmm. I went through then and how I failed the test. But, Kathy, I think that getting that low, mm. really, there's a good thing that has come out of it. You've mm. come to know God at a That's much true. deeper, more real level. Mm. And and the next time you're faced with crisis, you can point back to that point when you were in crisis it. and you felt like God wasn't there and you were even telling God, where are you? You've rejected me. And yet you saw that. Well, I think God it's like you. Jesus saying to Peter, I have prayed for you yes. that your faith will not fail. Mm -hmm. Well, Peter still denied him, mm -hmm. but Jesus knew the outcome. And when you are restored. Right, right. What and, does it say? And so, you know, you— I You will mean, encourage your brethren. You will yeah, encourage others. You know more now about how to get to God in right. that moment than you knew before that. And I right. never want to be in that place again. Right. That was a scary place as a Christian to be. Mm. I mean, I knew I knew I wouldn't forsake my faith, but it was just I, I can't hardly put words to it. it. Was just have you have you ever been there, or was it just me? No, no. it's okay. not just you. <laughs> no. It was frightening. It was frightening. I put the shame aside and the guilt mm -hmm. aside when I look back. That that's how low I'd gotten. But it was frightening. I, the Lord of my life, the love of my life, I couldn't. He wasn't there for me, although mm -hmm. he was. You didn't sense that he was there. You didn't feel that he was there. You didn't know he was there at that moment. I knew it, but mm -hmm. I, 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 I still can't put words to that experience. I just know it was horrific. I never want to be there again, go there again, and I hope when it starts, I'll recognize it for what it is. But you have a song now. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. A new stanza, maybe, to the, the song of your life that you didn't have written before. To the choir master with my stringed instruments. Yes, yes. The prophet Habakkuk went through a horrific time and then received a new song. The late Kathy Helvey described a similar experience. She was talking with Nancy Damas Walgamuth about the way Habakkuk affected her. Just think about the song she's singing now in the presence of our dear Savior. Some other friends have been responding to Habakkuk too. We heard from Maria Johnson, Holly Elliff, and Kimberly Wagner. If today's conversation has made you intrigued about the book of Habakkuk, good. Nancy's been walking us through an in-depth study of this book, and it offers rich insight that can be applied to your life. If you missed any episodes in the series, you can always check them out at our website or on the Revive Our Hearts app. Spiritually stimulating conversations, just like this one that we've been listening to, are a key part of the upcoming True Woman 22 conference. I hope you're already registered to attend. It's September 22nd to 24th in Indianapolis. Our theme this year is Heaven Rules. We'll explore the amazing and comforting truth that God is completely in charge. I hope you and a group of friends will be there so you can soak in the truth of God's Word and then encourage one another as you reflect on what you learned. Remember, the regular registration rate ends on Sunday, so you'll want to be sure to sign up soon. Monthly partner team members, your registration is on us, but you do still need to sign up. Again, to register for True Woman 22 at the regular rate, just visit ReviveOurHearts.com and sign up before July 31st. Or call us today at 1-800-569-5959. That's 1-800-569-5959. Jesus made it clear that we are naturally inclined to believe the lies of the devil. Some of those lies are ones we women are prone to fall for. Next week, Nancy will help us examine not only the lies women tend to believe, but the truth that sets us free. Have a great weekend, and then be back for Revive Our Hearts.
revive our hearts with Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth, calling you to sing about your freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.